What is going on, my Houston Texans family? Before the epic collapse in the fourth quarter and overtime, if you were a Houston Texans fan, you were very satisfied with the first three quarters because this felt like a different Houston Texans team than what we've seen in the past couple seasons. You know, the main thing that stood out to me was the atmosphere over there at NRG. It was loud. The crowd was into it. It felt like, you know, the Houston Texans team that were competing in the playoffs when young J.J. Wow, you know, was getting three sacks a game. The energy was there. Someone on Twitter posted their Apple Watch where it said that the air around you was so loud it could cause permanent damage. I love that from the Houston Texans fans. We haven't seen that type of energy in a crowd for a very long time. And not only that, the team was different in itself. Shout out to this defense, right? Two epic goal line stands, one where Jonathan Grenard finds the Hillheims, you know, for the three yard loss at the goal line. They were trying to be cute to end run a Wildcat, snuffed it out. That was huge for this young Houston Texans defense. And then the other goal line stands were, you know, resulted in the field goal, but were, were Jonathan Owens made a huge pass breakup at the back of the end zone. Jalen Petrie had a pass breakup there also. And then you saw number three overall pick Derek Stingley follow Alec Pierce wherever he went and then broke up the pass in the end zone. That could have resulted in a huge touchdown. That is what you wanted to see for this defense, this young Houston Texans defense. And then the offense, right? The offensive line was doing very good for the first three quarters. We were keeping Mills upright. I like the fact that we were mixing a lot of play actions, you know, keeping the Indianapolis Colts guessing. We were still very predictable, though. That's what kind of led to this offense's downfall as the game went on. But we were getting, you know, some guys involved. Davis Mills wasn't getting touched. And even though we didn't run the ball effectively, at one point it was effective enough where the Houston Texans were able just to go on an absolute tear. And Davis Mills looked good. He found O.J. Howard two times in the red zone. A potential tandem for the foreseeable future. I like this. Very good signing by Nick Casario. He only had, I think, two touchdowns in the past two years with the Buccaneers. And he already had two touchdowns in week one. O.J. Howard liked it. And I know Davis Mills loved the fact that he now has a big body red zone threat. And everything was going good, right? You thought this is a different Houston Texans team. We are going to end this game 1-0 with our noses held high to, you know, to the Broncos. And after the way they played, I would have been here thinking, man, there is a chance we could roll in there and upset them just the way we upset the Indianapolis Colts today. But then the fourth quarter happened. Then the old Houston Texans started to show up. Our run defense absolutely fell apart. It's not like we were holding Jonathan Taylor, absolutely shutting him down. But like I said, we were bend, don't break, but absolutely goes off in the fourth quarter in overtime, 161 yards. We had no answer for number 28. He is the best running back in football, and it definitely showed in obvious passing situations. How they came back was with Jonathan Taylor. They knew we were trying to defend the pass. The secondary was having a very good day, and they started just running him up the gut. That's how they, you know, eventually come back and tie the game against the Houston Texans for the offense, right? The offensive line just absolutely fell apart. And one of the main reasons for that was number 68, Justin Britt, who had a horrible game. Um, he was one of the reasons why multiple false starts happened, just didn't have control of the offensive line. He is the captain of the O-line. He said that himself that I needed to play better. And many of the screens that we ran, Justin Bray was not getting to his guy. We, we, you know, we saw Rex Burkhead shove him and stiff arm him because Rex Burkhead got to his guy right before Justin Bray did. He didn't have a good game, and that needs to be, you know, addressed going into week two against the talented Broncos defensive line. And then your two tackles, right? Tunsil and Howard both gave up big key sacks with Lermy Tunsil. It was that corner blitz where they absolutely destroyed Mills. And he fumbled the ball. And then the other one where it was just a simple three-man rush. And Titus Howard just gave up on the play. And Davis Mills just got sacked. The old Houston Texans were just coming into foration at this point. And then you're thinking, okay, coaching staff, do something, right? This is why we brought you guys. And what did they do? They absolutely fold in the moment. At one point, the Houston Texans could have kicked a field goal and made the game 23-3. to 
but they failed to do that. Instead, they took the um, delay of game and decided to punt to the Indianapolis Colts. It would have been a 53-yard field goal for Kaimi Fairbairn last year. He hit from 61 yards, so not sure why head coach Levy Smith decided not to go ahead and do that. And not only that, the play in overtime, the you know, the third and one. You cannot tell me you were going to put the ball in Rex Burkett's hand instead of Damian Pierce's. You cannot even convince me that, you know, that I would rather have Burkett instead of Drift Driscoll. I said it yesterday. I would rather have Drift Driscoll run that play than, um, than Rex Burkett. The offense just, you know, completely, you know, follow, it completely fell apart. And that kind of falls on Pep Hamilton also, who... If you're the guy who's supposed to be different, the guy who's supposed to be the QB guru and work with these young guys and develop young guys, and we finally, you know, give you play calling and you call a timeout, and then you run a simple running back up the gut behind the center who wasn't who who was playing ice the whole game, and then he gets blown up, and now you punt tie game, you're zero zero and one. The old Houston Texans came into fruition at the last focal points of the game. But that's okay, right? This is a young team. We have youth on our side. That's a video for tomorrow. As always, you guys let me know what you think. Go Texans. You guys have a very blessed day.